Hey guys, Shane here. So welcome to this M10 painting and weathering video, which is the collaboration between my channel and Scale Modeling Now, which is an online model magazine. So I've already partially built and primed this model using Vallejo Surface Primer. So I'm going to start by pre-shading our interior details with some German model layer Vallejo. Oh my God, I said that backwards. Basically some model layer German gray. So any type of um, dark gray or black can be used for this. And this is going to be sprayed into areas where there is some shadow, some recess, or any place where there's panel lines, or into corners, or any place you feel where the shadow would, uh, would gather. And this is just going to add contrast to the monotone white that we're going to be putting into the interior. So the main focus is this first video is going to be painting and weathering interiors, as there's a lot of kits coming onto the market where interiors are becoming very commonplace. So for the ammunition sewage racks, we're going to prime them with Flejo Surface Primer Panzer Grey, which is basically just like a dark grey. And I'm going to highlight them using Model Air Dark Grey Blue. And I'm just going to basically focus this onto the top. I'm just going to spray right down on top of it and slowly build this layer up. Small amount of paint. It's a bit hard to see here, uh, which is exactly the way you want it. I don't want to over highlight these. You will see me pinching the needle on my airbrush just to clear any dry paint off my needle tip. And I'm just making up a second highlight colour by mixing a little bit of light grey into our dark blue grey, roughly 3070. And I just put a single drop of airbrush thinner just to help that flow. I always find when you mix two model air colours together, they do need a little bit of thinning. But literally a drop or two of thinner is more than adequate. And I'm going to be very disciplined with this, and I'm just going to focus really on the tops of these uh, ammunition tubes. So the base colour for our interior is going to be Vallejo Game Colour Ghost Grey. Now this colour has got similar properties to model colour, though I think these uh, pigments for their game colour range are a bit more vibrant. So I'm going to thin these by just using some Vallejo Airbrush Thinner, and I'm going to thin it 60-40 with paint being the dominant. And I'm trying to make a milky consistency and I'll just keep adding thinner until I'm happy with it. It's very easy to thin these for airbrushing and they go down very well. And I'm going to start really applying this fairly thinly over our pre-shade areas. I want the, the pre-shade to show through, um, tr like uh, through this first layer of paint. I don't want to undo it entirely. And once all the interior has been given its base coat, we're going to give a highlight colour of game colour off-white. And it's going to be thinned in exactly the same way roughly 60-40, the uh, paint thinner ratio. You can add more or less if you wish, but I find this ratio works pretty well. And the best thing to do is just um, add a bit of paint and just add thinner as you go until you're happy with it. And as you'll see here, I'll just keep adding a little bit. I'll mix it, mix it into my cup. Just see how it flows by just pulling it up the edge of the, the cup wall and see how it flows back down until I'm happy with it. it. I just do it by eye, it's as simple as that. But that's the basic ratio I'm going for. So with this air, uh, highlight colour, I'm really going to focus into the centre of panels. Almost like a, a, a centre line or a panel highlight that we do in armour or aircraft modelling. And it's exactly the same here for the interior. I just spray a little bit, allow that to dry for a couple of seconds, move on to the next panel and the next panel and so on and so forth. Just by basically slowly building it up, I don't want to just hammer it down in one go. And the same here with the firewall details. Um, I'm not going to really highlight the the sides of the hull on the upper hull because you're not going to be able to see any of it once the sponsons have been added. So I'm just going to focus here on this firewall, which you can see. And I'm just spraying into the center of panels. And you can see how the detail immediately pops then. It really makes it vibrant and interesting. And it's the same here with our sponsons. That have already got, they've already been given their ghost grey. And I'm just really going to... Uh, model this on if you will. You see you see, I'm not entirely undoing either the pre-shade or the ghost grey layer. I want to keep the different colour values just to make it interesting. So I just spray a little bits and uh, allow other parts to show through. It's simple as that. Easy way just maybe to spray the leading edge of, of things. Now for the interior of the turret. We're going to do an olive drab colour, and that's going to be based with Model Air Armour Green, which is a very good colour for uh, olive drab. 
it's not entirely exact but it's pretty close and it's also light enough that you can actually see your details I'm just spraying this directly out of the bottle most of the PSI settings are always about 20 PSI for um, filet or you can go higher than that if you wish but uh, 20 PSI works pretty well I'm just slowly building this up often with colours like this especially like green and all that it does take several layers so it does take me two or three layers just to give, my, give me a very solid coat now you will see this kind of speckles down but that's actually more down to how my hairbrush is set up I think I have some slight damage on my nozzle so I'll have to get a replacement in the near future but it still sprays pretty well and just one or two small layers and it goes down very solidly I don't think solidly is a word but it is now So I'm going to make up a highlight colour for our olive drab and I'm just going to take some yellow ochre and add it to our olive drab roughly 70-30 with the armour green being our dominant colour. And that just gives a slightly warmer hue without it being overly bright. You can add more olive, or, uh, sorry should I say, you can use more yellow ochre to the armour green as you wish but I find it's better to add it in stages. Um, and just do it layer by layer, getting progressively lighter rather than going too light too quick. You can really undo your your hard work, and it'll basically change the the U and saturation of your of your work. And here you go. I'm just adding a little bit more uh, yellow ochre to the armor green because I want to make it a little bit more vibrant. So now you have two in effect two qualities or two values of highlight already in this layer now because I've I laid a slightly lighter or should I say darker highlight before this and I'm just going to come in and focus this really on the top of the gun barrel and some of the leading edges of the open um, interior of the turret and there we go then we have several layers of highlight that makes it very interesting yes it's going to be very stark but we're going to tone all this back with filters and washes and it'll make it all become uniform and very much blend together but we'll come to that now in a few moments so I'm focusing this slightly lighter more intense yellow ochre armor green mixture really on the leading edges the top edges of the turret places where i feel that i just want to make them pop you know i'm not being entirely accurate to where light would fall because all these interior like these sharp angles would be in shadow but i just i kind of want to allow a viewer's eye to see what we're doing I'm going to take our armor green now and our yellow ochre mix it 50 50 together and i'm going to take a very fine brush and I'm just going to start doing some micro chipping. So the brush I'm using is a number one or number zero rigor brush, and these are from the Windsor and Newton Cotman range. And I'm just basically tracing some of the leading edges. As you can see, it's very subtle; you can barely see it, which is normally the way you want for these type of scratches. This is more kind of paint abrasion that the from friction of being used or guys rubbing off against it or whatever that the um, paint becomes appears lighter. This can be an optional stage, but I thought I'd show you nonetheless, just in case uh, you want to add it. And it does add an extra layer of detail to your interiors. Another form of chipping that we're going to be using quite extensively is sponge chipping. So I've just taken a piece of a packing sponge, and I've taken some Vallejo model color German camo black brown. And uh, I'm just going to use this jagged edge of torn off sponge to create some random chipping effects on some of the sharp edges of the turret. I'm going to really just use uh, this form of chipping because I found that though the, the micro chipping does look nice, you can't really see it that well. Um, so I'm kind of over exaggerating some of these chips, but I'm also being kind of careful and I'm thinking about where I'm putting them. Again, I'm putting them on leading edges areas where the crew will be coming into contact with so i'm just not go like i'm not going mad it's one of the mistakes i see a lot of people do with interiors is they basically weather them the hell and back which you know if it's a, a 20 or 30 year old vehicle and it's been basically just driven into the ground then fair enough but these machines were more grimy than they were rusted to hell um, as they still were had to be kind of combat operational so these crews would have looked after the machines as best they could 
even though like you know they're not going to be parade ground nice like they're not going to be a peacetime army, but they are still going to be pretty well maintained. Again, I'm using our sponge on these sponson plates, and I'm just really taking off the leading edge. When you're doing sharp edges like I'm doing here, make sure that you just don't do the top. Also, turn it on its side and bring the chip down. Uh, as you can see here, as I turn it on its side and bring the chips down. What happens if you don't do this is a chip is just on the top of the plate, but you can see the, the edge of it, if you will, and the chip doesn't translate across, and it doesn't look very realistic. So you'll see me turn it on its side and bring the chips down. So when we're letting all this dry, I'm going to take some uh, Vallejo Panzer Aces US Tanker. Again, you could use any type of khaki color here. I'm going to start painting in the, re the, re um, the retaining straps for these ammunition cases. Now I make a mistake here, these smaller tabs at the bottom should actually be interior white, so I would recommend just using ghost grey for this. Um, I thought they were actually a part of the uh, the straps that retrain, uh, retain the ammunition, but they're actually a part of the actual in integral ammunition racks. Tamiya has simplified this somewhat, so it was a bit confusing. But again, just using uh, some very slightly watered down paint, I literally just dip my, the tip of my brush in some water and mix it into the paint on my palette. And then there's a small little tab here in the center of these two um, ammunition racks that's a part of the interior bulkhead, if you will. And I'm just gonna paint that ghost gray. Again, I'm gonna be very careful not to get it onto the areas we've already painted. And if we do, uh, before it dries, I'm just gonna take a clean brush uh, dip it in water and just wipe it away before it can dry if I get any over overspill. It's very easy to clean up uh, acrylic paints when I do that. For the cleaning rods of the 3 inch gun I'm taking some reflective green and I'm just going to paint that in. On hindsight I probably would be better off painting it before I installed it, which is often the way you have to do with interior kits. It's a little bit like an aircraft, you have to kind of build a bit, paint a bit, build a bit. But we got around it. Now the ring, the turret ring itself, it's just been painted in uh, gunmetal. As this will be visible through the open hatch, and make sure you paint that in. I'm also going to do a little bit of detail painting of the gun sign, just painting a bit of flat black into the um, rubber eye pieces for the, the gunner's sight here. It's just little details like this to make, make the interior pop. Now you will see, and I didn't notice these until the end, that there are big pin marks in the interior of this turret. Tamiya, in her infinite wisdom, decided to put big punch marks in the interior of the open turret which you can see, and I didn't realize I forgot about them until I literally had the model part to this point. Um, so at that point, I wasn't gonna go back and strip down the model and and fill them. So just be, bear that in mind, make sure you fill those before you um, before you get painting. I'm also just painting the, the main gunner side here, as in like the uh, eyepiece. So I've gloss coated the model, as you can see by its reflectiveness, and I'm gonna put down a dot filter so I'm just going to prepare our surface with a, a brush that's been lightly dampened with um, Artist's White Spirit. And I'm just going to take some oil paint, which is this case, it's going to be titanium white and yellow ochre. And I'm just going to do a very simple and very standard dot filter. And then I'm going to take a clean brush that's been slightly moistened with White Spirit. And I'm going to start pulling down in one direction. And I'm just going to blend it until it's almost in fizzle. And this is going to give us some nice kind of rain and streaking effects. And just help blend all this chipping together.
That's going to take some 502 Shadow Brown. And I'm just going to apply it directly onto the sponsons. I have glossed coats of these sponsons before, so you can see the reflective quality of them. And I'm just painting this oil paint directly onto the sponson. And what I'm going to do as well here is in the interior part, just going to paint it directly on. And I'm going to leave it for about 5 10 minutes before uh, we do the next step. Again, everything's been gloss coated so our preceding layer of paint has been protected. So I'm just going to take a piece of paper towel or kitchen roll. I'm going to fold it into a wedge and I'm just going to wipe it clean. It's pulling most of the oil paint with it. With it. And we're just going to get this really grimy residue. It's a very simple way of adding age and grime to an interior. And I think it works really well rather than going mad with streaks. If you find that the oil paint doesn't want to move, don't panic. Just basically dip a little bit of white spirit onto the, the paper towel or the rag you're using and it'll lift it right off. And it will leave a very light residue of the shadow brown colour. And it gives us this wonderful grimy kind of worn effect. Now I don't want to soak my uh, my paper towel here uh, in white spirit. Just mo just dampen it. Just a bit. Uh, don't uh, oversaturate it. And the reason why I'm using a paper towel is you won't get any lint uh, from paper towel. And it's not going to destroy. If you use Q-tips, sometimes you get that. And also, I just want a big surface so I can wipe it all away in a kind of uniform way. Put a small amount of white spirit onto my paper towel. And I'm just going to kind of scrub it off. This is a very simple and very effective technique for weathering interiors. I tend not to do these on the exterior of models, but I find in interior models it works really well. Our next step now we're going to do here is we're going to add a pin wash using our 502 Shadow Brown, which has been tinned with Artist White Spirit, roughly 20% oil to 80% spirit thinner. This has to be pretty heavily tinned, and I'm just going to I'm going to start working this down into any recessed detail, any panel line, and what it's going to do is it's going to uh, break up these details and make them pop, and basically you're framing them. Again, I'm going to do it here in the interior, and you can see those big dirty pin marks that I forgot about, which I'm mortified by, but this, these things do happen, and in a way you get to see exactly where you're getting with this kit. For the most part it's a good kit, but there are a few little silly things that time you do and sometimes putting pin marks in the interior of an open turret uh, is one of them. <laughs> and I'm just going to basically uh, paint this heavily tinned down oil paint into any recessed details, any panel lines like I said, any bits of uh, extruding detail, just to break it up, just to frame it, to allow a viewer's eye see that there is layers of detail. Basically, you're trying to help a viewer see the detail and see your work. And that's probably the mentality I hold when I'm, I'm working on my models. Even though no one's going to see them but me and you guys, I always kind of imagine if someone was going to view my work, I had to make it as easy for them to see it. And therefore, it, it kind of makes me kind of put a bit more effort into it. Even though I'm not a really competitive modeler, I don't really do model shows, but just for myself. little bit of oil onto the gun sights again focusing on these little storage bins here just around to the, the lids and the hinge detail just again to, to, to draw attention to it otherwise it gets lost in uh, the monotone olive drab interior of this of this gun turret and you can be quite messy with this if you wish um, don't worry about it because it goes all over the place. You can always go back with a clean brush when it's dried uh, to the touch and just clean it up with a, a brush that's been dipped in white spirit. And you, you just literally, it's almost like taking an, er an eraser to a pencil. You just start like wiping it away and manipulating it. It's, uh, oils are a very, very forgiving substance. Um, I would really strongly recommend them. I know a lot of people would just say they use acrylics or mud washes or clay washes. 
where um, enamel and oil, but especially oils, are really where it's at. Gives you a lot of freedom, a lot of control, and will really just work with you. We'll do anything it asks you ask of it, as long as you use it the right way. Again, I'm going to put some of this shadow brown into this detail up here, which is basically um, ammunition clips for a, a Thompson submachine gun. Now we're going to start working on the fighting compartment floor. Again, we're taking our watered down shadow brown. Well, not our watered down, our tinned down shadow brown. And I'm going to start working them into all these panel lines, the edges of the fighting compartment, just to draw some uh, attention to it. And halfway during this, I actually decided I'll actually apply this wash into the diamond pattern of like the non-slip floor, just to make it look a little bit more weathered up. Now we're going to be wiping the the excess away before it dries, which we'll do now in a couple of seconds. Thing to bear in mind when you're dealing with like a, a diamond pattern is don't um, scrub the interior. Dab like I'm doing here. If you scrub it, the cross pattern or the diamond pattern will begin to break the paper towel down and you'll get lint everywhere uh, which we learned when we were doing our Steyr 1500 truck and then just dab it away and we get a slowly stained effect and again we're taking our oil wash again and we're working in on the gun uh, breech assembly and I'm just basically putting it into any of the recessed details any of the reinforcing ribs and all that and really what I'm just doing is I'm making the gun look a bit grimy and just breaking up the, the, the surface detail so people know there's actually like a 3D quality to it. I'm going to start doing little um, pin washes here on these rivets just to draw a bit of attention to them. So I'm just literally just tapping my brush against them and letting the, comp the capillary action of the wash draw, the, draw the, the pigment into these pin heads or these bolt heads. And that's blending some of the squash here just to blend it in. You'll see me wipe it away with my finger as well, of course. Best maybe to wear um, gloves on both hands because we don't want any of this white spirit getting in on our hands or into our bloodstream. This stuff is not really good for us. Uh, so it's kind of just a little bit of a, a safety warning there. You'll also notice that I had forgotten at the time in my infin infinite professionalism to film um, adding a layer of chips to the gun um, assembly, which I just took some gun metal and painted in some metallic chips to the areas that we came in with the sponge to. So I'm just assembling our ammunition racks on our sponsons. And then once they're glued, I'm just going to glue those in uh, to our upper hull. I'm just going to use a bit of Revell Contactor for this. Uh, I ran out of extra tin at the time. But we can get away with it because you're not going to see a lot of it. As often as the, the, the kind of the shame about doing interiors is you do a lot of work and then once everything's together, you basically see nothing. So we're going to do a little bit of pigment work on our uh, tur or our interior floor. Just going to use a bit of AK Dark Earth. You can use any type of pigment or even an enamel wash for this if you wished. Um, I'm just going to use some pigment. And I'm just going to just work it in. I'm not going to use any type of figment, uh, pigment fi uh, fixer. There's no need because once it's sealed up, it can't be wiped away. You know, you're not going to come into contact with it. I'm just going to apply a little bit. I don't want to go too mad with it. I'm just going to add it to little places and blend it in. Again, less is more. Just do a little bit at a time, have a look at it, and see do you like it, and slowly work it up. Then I'm going to take some AK kerosene from their um, aircraft range, and I'm just going to do some stains on the floor. Um, you probably could take uh, grease or oil stains and do this as well, but I just had this on, on hand, again, because this has a little bit of a glossy finish. And I'm just going to do some pretend staining. And again, it's just adding layers of interest to our model.
can see the reflected quality to it. Now, I don't know how much we're going to see of that once I put the turret in place, but still, it's nice to know that it's there if anyone takes the time to look. And there we have our whole interior totally done and weathered up. And once we do a few uh, test fits, make sure everything fits okay, we're going to glue everything down. Again, with our crusty contacta, being careful not to get any glue where we don't want it because we don't want to make any glue marks or stains on the paint so just be very careful where you place this because this paint can get messy if you're not careful now the fit on this is very good including the notorious fit between the transmission and the upper hull now here's our turret interior once the it's got its matte coat to take the gloss away i paint the ammunition separately just using some citadel uh, brass colors So I painted up the uh, M the Thompson submachine gun separately too and just glued it in place. Often you'll have to do that, you have to glue things separately and then super glue them in place. And it's just the best way to roll with that. So I'm going to assemble our turret and with that, this episode is done. So I really hope you guys enjoyed it and give you some ideas for working with your own interiors. So I hope you join me in the next episode where we start painting the olive drab exterior for this vehicle. I've been Shane. Bye-bye.